Are you suffering a Saab 93 no crank, no start situation? You turn the ignition key, nothing happens, not even a click from under bonnet. You've checked all the usual suspects for no start situations with no joy. Maybe you've had a Tech 2 on it. In which case, did you see a code U0212? No communication error? Well, hopefully you've already seen the short video that I've done, which will show you how to diagnose if it's the ABS module that's at fault. I'll link to that video in the description so you can watch it after this. But in this longer video, I'm gonna show you how to repair the ABS ECU. Garages will only offer you a replacement ABS module. But even if you get a garage to do what I'm gonna show you now, it shouldn't cost you more than 100 pounds in labor. And of course, if you can do it yourself, it'll cost you nothing bar the few tools that you might have to buy, 30, 40 quids worth of gear. The ABS module as a whole is made up of two major parts, valve block, which is the big aluminium block that you see there, and on the side of it here, control module or ECU, which is easier to see if we disconnect the harness. And the particular no communication problem is caused by one or more of these first four pins becoming uh, a loose connection at the PCB. So we need to remove this ECU from the ABS so that we can get at the PCB board to be able to make that repair. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. The harness is clipped to the body in white bracket that the ABS module is bolted to and also to this brake pipe here. So release the clip from the brake pipe took the harness and connector out of the way. With a 13 millimeter socket, undo these two screws and remove them from the bracket. You can see from this second hand unit that I've got here, that the bracket is also fixed at a lower point into a body in white bracket, simply pressed in with a, with a rubber grommet. So reach down, find that rubber grommet and push upwards at the same time as pulling upwards on the, on the bracket. And what you should be able to do is release the bracket from the grommet, leaving the grommet behind in the body and white bracket. And very gently ease the ABS unit towards the engine, just enough so that you've got some hand room down here between the turret and the ECU. Now this is a B207 engine, which is the four cylinder petrol. If you've got a V6 or a diesel, then you may need to remove the battery and the battery tray to get this access. There are four screws now holding the ECU to the valve block. We need to undo those screws. But from here on in, I'm going to use this spare module and I'm going to work on it on the bench because it's an awful lot easier to do and it's an awful lot easier to show you what needs to be done to separate the ECU from the valve block and make the repair. Come and join me at the bench. This is an extremely thorough and comprehensive video covering this repair and other things you can do when you, whilst you've got the ABS unit apart that will help to prolong its life. Be sure to watch it all the way through. And once you've given yourself a little bit of hand room on this side to the uh, suspension turret, these four screws are what you need to remove. Because of the limited access, you won't be able to use a Torx screwdriver, but you do need a Torx 20. My suggestion is to use a quarter drive Torx 20 socket on a quarter drive handle or a T20 Torx Allen key. Loosen off these four screws and undo them completely. Because of the limited room, it's probably best to leave them in there unless you feel you can get them out with a magnetic bit. Once you've loosened the four screws, to save yourself from losing them into the black hole that is the engine bay, put a little bit of tape round where they are, stop them falling out. But once they're all loose, make sure you've removed the connector and now pull the ECU away from the body of the ABS valve block. Try and pull it as straight as possible and bring it far enough, which is about a, an inch and a half, so that you can lift it out away from the valve block. We now need to remove this metal lid, which is glued on. The glue is the white layer that you can see in this picture. With a sharp craft knife, go round the whole periphery and cut through that glue layer all the way round if you can get down inside where the screws go, then great. If not, don't worry too much about it. Then starting at a corner, five millimeter flat blade screwdriver or a fairly sharp four millimeter screwdriver, get your screwdriver into that slit that you've just cut and rotate it ever so slightly to try and lift the lid away from the plastic. At one corner, eventually you will get the lid lifted far enough away that you can put a blade in there to stop it folding back in. And that gives you a little more purchase further along as the gap opens up all the way around. Do that on each section. Keep working your way around 
prising it apart as you go. Take your time over this bit, try not to damage anything until the lid comes off. For what we're doing today, we don't need to dismantle this any further. No need to get the PCB out. The pins that are giving us the trouble, numbers 1, 2, 13 and 14, are these first four solder joints just along here. This is where the pins are soldered to the board and it's those joints that give the trouble. They either become dry joints or with NVH issues in the car, they become loose because the solder joint actually breaks. But that can, of course, happen to any of the joints all the way along. So what we need to do in particular to solve the problem we're talking about today, we need to re-solder these four joints. Although I would recommend that while you've got this apart and got it out, you re-solder all of the pin joints. You'll need your soldering iron and either a desolder pump or a desoldering wick. I must confess, I actually prefer the wicks myself, but uh, I've, I've run out. So using your pump and your soldering iron, on each joint in turn, melt the solder and suck the solder off. Make sure you've got your soldering iron at an appropriate temperature. I would recommend having it a little hotter rather than a little cooler because then you can get in and quickly pull the solder off. You don't have to leave your soldering iron lingering on the joint. That should leave you with a nice clean joint ready for re-soldering. Get yourself some good quality, fine electronic solder with flux core and a nicely worn soldering iron and just go along and re-solder each joint in turn. As you finish soldering on each joint, try not to lift the soldering iron away sideways, draw it straight up and away. Simply go along and repeat that process on all of the joints down that side. If you're getting value from this video and I've saved you time, hassle, better still money and you'd like to show your appreciation by supporting the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the description. Whilst you've got the PCB out and exposed and you're repairing these edge pin connections, look across the whole board as well and look see if there are any other dry joints or loose joints because MVH can cause a problem with any uh, joint. If you've got one, use a jeweler's loop. If you haven't, try a magnifier app on your phone. And if you find any problematic joints, treat them exactly the same as you have these edge pins. And then the final step on the board before putting it back together with some decent quality electrical contact cleaner, clean the joints that you've just re-soldered. And once your electrical contact cleaner is dried, apply some fresh conformal coating. When you're applying your fresh conformal coating across the pins that you've repaired, it's also a good idea to put fresh conformal coating across the whole board and around all the connections. Again, NVH may may have damaged the coating or caused splits in it. This conformal coating just goes on like a thick gel. In particular, put conformal coating around these heat sink points. Do two coats. The reason for that will become clear in a short while. Apply a couple of coats and then we're ready to put it back together. The seal on the lid is a rubber compound which will end up with a groove in it all the way around which takes this plastic lip. Make sure you know which way the lid goes back on because these here are heat sink points for the PCB. And before finally putting it back together, using your good quality contact cleaner and a toothbrush or a decent stiff nylon brush, give the pins a good clean along with the pin cavity and give it a spray out. And also Give the solenoid coils a good clean. Make sure there's no dust or grease in there as well. Then leave that and make sure it's allowed to dry thoroughly. Once your soldering's all done and your conformal coating is all dried, especially around here, get to make sure you've got two coats around each of those points, but not across those points. And th at the point at which you're ready to put the uh, lid back onto the PCB, apply a little thermal paste to these heatsink points if you can. If you haven't got any thermal paste, just apply a smear with a Q-tip of copper grease. The copper particles in copper grease make the uh, grease quite a good conductor of heat and we'll make sure that we've got good contact between the heat sink points on the lid and the heat sink points on the board. The last thing we want is an air gap between those two. But don't go mad just apply a smear and just in case you're wondering about the efficacy of using copper grease instead of thermal paste I'll put a resource in the description and all I'm doing with a tube of silicon sealant with a very fine nozzle I'm just filling this groove all the way around drop the lid back into place it might be worth putting some tape around it or putting a weight on top of it whilst the uh, glue set. Before we put the ECU back together with the uh, valve block, something you might notice on yours, the ECU is supposed to have 
a sealed connection around the periphery of these valves to seal against water and dirt ingress. But I can see on this second hand one that that seal is by no means perfect. If we look around the edges of some of these valves, there is in fact a little bit of corrosion going on, which suggests that some dampness has got in. It's worth doing a good job of cleaning up these valves really well, because this rust that occurs in here, if it gets bad enough, it can cause the valves to stick, which means your ABS won't work properly. So make sure to do a good job of cleaning it up. Now I'm getting rid of the rust on this one by using some rust remover gel. Use a small paintbrush, get some gel in there, Follow the instructions on whatever brand of gel you're using. I would recommend either Hammerite if you're in the UK or Built Hamber. Built Hamber stuff is probably about the best there is. But do that on all of the valves to make sure that any rust is dissolved, cannot cause the valves to stick. I suggest reapplying the gel every five minutes or use the brush just to uh, wet the gel with some water. If it's a sunny day and you're doing this outside and the gel dries, it's not doing its job. Of course, I'm doing this on the bench, which makes life very easy. Uh, on the car, you might have uh, some more troublesome access, in which case you might have to cut your paintbrush down, but it is worth going to the effort of doing this. This could save you from ever having to buy a new ABS valve block, and you don't want to know how much they might be. Once you've got the gel on, if again, if you can get in there and you've got a sharp pointed pick go around the base of each valve and scrape into the rust layer that'll help the gel get a bite on the rust clean it as best you can and then clean around the edge where the seal is supposed to make if like on this one you find that the seal integrity has been compromised and water and dirt has been getting into the solenoid area remove the rubber seal which is damaged and of course you can't buy another one and with a folded seam on the edge of a microfiber cloth and, and some of your uh, contact cleaner, go round and clean the groove where the seal came out from. And once that's clean, apply a bead of silicon around the uh, groove to just a little tiny bit more than the depth of the groove and then put it back on the valve block. If you've either got any or can find a source for some uh, rubber o-ring cord with the right size, then uh, get yourself some and you could make yourself a new gasket. By my reckoning, you will need some three millimeter diameter O-ring cord. And final thing, just before putting the ECU back on, the whole area and the solenoid pins are spraying with dry lube and allow it to thoroughly dry, but wipe the lube off just around the edge of the block where the seal with the ECU is going to uh, mate and give that a few moments to dry thoroughly. Then back on the car and again making sure that you know which way around to put it on. Place the ECU module back onto the valve block, push it down, particularly the motor connections which are here and replace your screws. You might need to put the screws into the ECU before you put the ECU on the valve block. Connect back up and you should now have a repaired ECU and your car should start and run fine. If it doesn't, then there's an electronic problem with the ECU and it's not just the connections. But overall, this job shouldn't take you much more than an hour, two hours absolute tops, even if you go very, very carefully. So it's worth trying this first before shelling out an awful lot of money on a new ABS module.